At 14 years old, 15 years old, my country went into civil war. Everything that I knew and loved disappeared. The people that I knew and loved, my friends, my community, my neighborhood. I had a picture in my mind of what I was going to become, and it wasn't to become a professional footballer. So once that happened, I realized that nothing is guaranteed in life. You have to pursue your dreams with everything that you have, and, and that's why I do what I do. Determine a winner and an innovator. I like to be the first to do things. Oh, I'm a goal scorer. I can see, I can see the action five, six seconds before it happens. I can anticipate multiple outcomes. So I know how to position myself. And then it's all about technique. Do you have the right technique to finish? But being a goal scorer is about having vision. So I take all of that same thing and I apply it to my life. I apply it to my business. My most powerful trait as a person is my resilience, my ability to survive, my unassumingness. You never actually know what's about to happen. You never know my power. You never know my strength. You never know what I'm thinking. You make assumptions about me and they always turn out to be wrong. I grew up on SD Copa Road next to SKD Stadium, the Samuel Kanyado Sports Complex. So the inevitable outcome would be that I would be a professional football player. You know, grew up when the stadium was built. It's fantastic memories, jumping over the stadium, going to the county meet, going to IE Barrow games, national team games, watching my idols play, you know. So I could not have had a better location to grow up and become a professional football player. My town, Morovia, slash my neighborhood, Painesville, was a peaceful place back in the 80s. I mean, young people like us, you know, about seven, eight, nine, ten years old, we used to roam the entire community on our bicycles or walking, picking up friends, you know, playing football anywhere there was a field to play. You know, I, I, I feel sad for young people today because that part of their, that natural feeling of their childhood, I don't see it these days, and uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a loss for them. And one thing is the, the ability, the human ability to work out problems amongst young people. Now, you always have adults around, and, and before when we were growing up, you had to solve it. A lot of fights, a lot of negotiations, so I think I took a lot of that with me also. I started playing football when my dad introduced me to the game. Um, I remember vividly, uh, we used to live on A.B. Cobbard Road, and uh, me and my brother went over the fence and we started kicking the ball around. And from the first day, I fell in love with the game. I mean, nothing has been clearer in my life than my love for football. And I didn't know where it would take me, and I didn't know what it would teach me. But I knew that this game, this ball, I would come alive every time we would play football in the neighborhood. I mean, we started playing free time ball in the community and everywhere that I went growing up as a young man in my community, I was, if not the best player, I was one of the best players. And, and that kind of excited me to want to do more. And then of course, it's the 1986 World Cup that my father took us to at the Relda Cinema on, in Sinkor, where I got to see Maradona for the first time. And that just sealed the deal for me because we heard about Pele, we heard about these, all these guys. And then seeing Maradona on the big screen was, you know, and, and growing up, of course, local football was amazing. So it was, it was an easy, it was clear for me. It was never a doubt in my mind what I, what I loved. Local football in the community wasn't very organized. Um, there was no youth leagues. You kind of had to organize yourself. And as I stated earlier, you know, I, I founded a team at a very young age called the Mighty Cobra. And I'm not sure why we call it the Mighty Cobra, but it became the Mighty Cobra. And there was a team on SD Cobra Road made up of all of our friends and those who wanted to play and those who didn't want to play. So on the weekends, we would play what we call a round town game. We would write a letter, get our bigger cousin to write a letter, send it to a team in another community. They would come play us, the place would be packed. And I excelled in those games. Um, 
you know, it was, it was fond memories. Unfortunately, you know, we, we didn't have social media and to capture all these memories and, and a lot of it has been lost throughout the years. But those were the formative years when I truly fell in love with the sport and, uh, and, and a game that would later on become very important in my life. I'm, I'm the highest level of competitive, so yes, the answer is yes. I hate to lose Mawa, I don't want to lose Chekhov's, I don't want to lose cards, I don't want to lose PlayStation. So I try to control that, that fire that is burning inside me when it comes to competition. But for lack of a better word, I'm a warrior. It developed just over the years, competing, trying to be the best. I think for me it was it was always people in my community because I was a kid who lived in the fence, they thought I was soft. So I always had to fight and to prove to people that I can fight also. So, you know, some of my friends came from different communities in the in the neighborhood and I think there was a few older boys who thought they could just walk over over me and over us because they said, Oh, those kids they live in the fence, you know, they they that the American chicken. But when the game started, we fought. And I think I built up that, that mentality to fight. And I think it really helped me. You know, sometimes people want to take your football and carry it to their house. But the football is not for you. So we fight. And you know, with no, with no adult supervision, I built up that, that warrior mentality that, that, would, would, you know, that you have to fight for what is yours. My community was a smaller community than it was today. I grew up, as I said, on SD Copa Road. You know, we knew, everybody knew everybody. Um, it was a dusty road. My grandmother lived down the street. My parents lived at the intersection. Uh, there's a big village, uh, the King Gray and Nawatan area. A lot of our friends came from there and in the community as well. So it was, it was a well-knit community. Everybody knew everybody. Kids could roam free. We would go without parental supervision up and down the community, play a football game, free time ball, anywhere we could. And, uh, and, and you know, we used to play this game called uh, uh, a war. And it's kind of sad because then later on the Liberian War came, but we used to actually play this game called War, where one part of the neighborhood would go and attack the other part of the neighborhood and capture prisoners. And, you know, just because we had idle time to, to kill, but, you know, it was a good childhood, man. A lot of young, young people, we, we uh, you know, fond memories until our turbulent past came, you know. So yeah, I learned a lot about, about relationships and that everybody is not equal, but everybody should be treated fairly. And, and growing up with my friends, uh, it was a good experience. My mom is the ultimate people's person. Um, compassionate, communicator, and a businesswoman. And I think I get a lot of that from her. Um, fierce disciplinarian, but you never see it coming. I used to be afraid to get punished by my mom more than I would for my dad. So she she would not love me saying this, but she you know she she was deadly, and uh, but her love was 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 endless, and and we love her, and uh, you know I'm grateful to have had and have a mother you know that could always support me and, and guide me and uh, you know, help me become the person that I am. My dad is a patriot, uh, a man that loves. Liberia and instilled in us a love for Liberia that is still manifesting today. Um, took us all the time to where he was born and raised in, in Cape Mount and that has allowed me to build a, a serious uh, uh, affection and an emotional connection to, to, to Robert's Sport uh, where I do business now and uh, I remember driving on a dusty road for five, six hours from Morovia to Clay Junction, from Clay Junction to Medina, from Medina to Robertsport. And people are like, oh, you're going to, oh, going to our grandmother in Cape Mount. And I mean, and at that time, you know, it was just fun for us. But what he was actually doing was laying the seeds for love for your country and for where you're from. And, and he, he is an amazing patriot. He's also a scholar. I mean, not because he's my dad, he's one of the smartest, if not the smartest person that I know, you know, academically, very, very savvy, intelligent guy. And I think, that book smartness I, I get from him. But his real strength is his resilience, you know, 
coming from a humble background to fight to get to where he is today, you know, with all the obstacles and challenges put in front of him. You know, I always say to myself, if, if he can, I've had far more opportunities in life than he had growing up. And if he can do it, I can do better. I can do more. So there's no excuse. My dad would probably say, I want more than I, I should. I want it fast or I, I want to achieve things fast. And, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a maverick probably he'll say that I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be normal, but that wasn't because I didn't want to be normal. It was because I saw my entire life blow up in my face. At 14 years old, 15 years old, my country went into civil war. Everything that I knew and loved disappeared. The people that I knew and loved, my friends, my community, my neighborhood. I had a picture in my mind of what I was going to become. And it wasn't to become a professional footballer. So once that happened, I realized that nothing is guaranteed in life. You have to pursue your dreams with everything that you have. And, and that's why I do what I do, because I don't want anybody else to determine my destination. And I, I want to be the one that decides. And I think the real victory isn't just the effort and the fight. Football helped me learn teamwork. It helped me to understand at a very early age that I need people. I need to work with people and I need to motivate people for us to reach one common goal. And that has never changed throughout my entire life. So the game of sport and football in general, it's, it's an amazing educational process that you go through that sometimes you don't even realize that you're going through it. So I'm grateful to the game. Yeah, we had a lot of success on the field. I was very fortunate to play for a guy called Gene Chiswitz, who's passed away now, but um, he's very, very good to me and my family. My brothers and my cousins followed at this high school as well. Um, but he was the all-time winningest high school coach in America. Very well-known guy. At one time, he was the coach of the U.S. national team back in 19, I think, I don't even know, 1970, 80, something like that. But, and he really was my introduction into to organize football. Most of our football is played in communities where young people, uh, you know, leave school. Some of them are not in school, but the game, they, they, they gravitate towards the game. So by helping the communities to organize uh, themselves a little bit better, organize the competitions in communities that are hotbeds for football will help to be the major catalyst of the future generation of footballers. So the communities continue to embrace the game. They have always embraced the game, but I think the Liberian Football Association must also engage the communities in helping them to organize these competitions a little bit better by, for example, improving their infrastructure. Commercialization was the vision of President Billity. I think it was a success for the first time in the history of Liberian football. We received a sponsorship in a commercial partner in Cellcom. Um, we're hoping also that this relationship continues. My vision is professionalization. The ability to manage your opportunities, the ability to manage your resources, the ability to create a more sustainable Liberian football association, one that takes grows from strength to strength. To do that, you need professional people. You need people who are thinking about football 24 hours a day. You need people who have an education in football, a background in sports, sports management, sports psychology, et cetera, et cetera. We need to get away from the culture and the mentality that football is a hobby. Football is something that we do after we get off of work. To get the maximum outcome out of football and sport in Liberia, we need to have people thinking 24 hours a day about football and about sport. It should not be something that you just do as a pastime. Who better to offer those opportunities than someone who's been a professional athlete, who's been in a professional environment. So the vision is clear from commercialization to professionalization. Branding and marketing are very important. Your image is very important. How you present yourself in your local market and the international market is very important. But you need professional people who know what they're doing.
to be able to maximize the opportunities, to maximize your brand, to maximize your value. You also need to have a product, a quality product on the field. The two of them go hand in hand. To do that, you have to have programs that help to develop better coaches, better players, to raise the standard of Liberian football and to put Liberian football back on the world stage. Infrastructure is the sole most important aspect of my plan. The reason for that is, in the last 10-15 years, Liberian population has almost doubled. Areas where young people used to play sports are now encumbered by development, by uh, structures, by whatever reason. It's imperative that Liberian Football Association continues to develop football pitches so that young people have a place to go and play the game. If we don't do this, we lose a great opportunity in Liberian football of developing our talent and being able to run our programs. My vision for men and women's football, as I stated, is from commercialization to professionalization. That process is very detailed. We're investing a lot of time and resources into the grassroots to produce the type of players that can raise the standard of our game. We're also going to focus a lot on women's football. I think this is an untapped area of potential. The world football is moving in a direction to promote women's football. I think Liberia should follow suit. We're going to invest a lot of energy to produce young people, females that can compete on an international level and also make us proud. We're also going to invest a lot of effort into coaches. Your players can only be as good as your coaching. And we're not just going to wait for FIFA and wait for CAF to bring uh, opportunities. We're going to pursue opportunities like we did with Anderlecht Football Club and other European clubs that we're speaking to at the moment. It's imperative that the coaches, the players, the infrastructure, the grassroots, the management, it's all connected and it needs to be well managed. And this is why professionalization is very important. Someone who understands where we're going, someone who's been there before, and someone who sees a clear vision for how, what the definition of success will be. Our youth development programs do exist, but they could be better. And we could gravitate a lot of our energy towards youth development. I'm also a strong believer in the youth development, the grassroots programs. If we don't lay the right foundation, we are, we will just, we are just wasting time. Um, our focus should be on what type of player are we producing for the first division leagues, for the second division leagues, and also for women's football. What type of young player at the age of 14 or 15, what type of football education is, is he receiving? As well as what type of people are we producing in Liberian football? We don't want to create a culture as done in the past where when you leave the game, you leave football. We want for as many people who have participated in the game to continue to make contributions to football beyond the game. We're also going to have programs for that. And that's very important for me, to have football people stay in football. It's imperative that Liberia continues to engage other international partners in the development of our football. Football can only be developed with collaboration. This is an international game, and the beauty of football, it's a global game. The rules are the same in Japan as they are in Liberia. This is not a cultural issue. This is an issue of we want to see our football better. We want to see Liberians, Liberian footballers, both male and female, on an international stage having success. We want to produce another world best player. We want to be part of the conversation in African football that is a positive one for Liberian football. And I believe with the right organization, with the right vision, the right plan, we can get there. We identify those kids by having a way to attract them. To have a way to attract them, you have to have something that's valuable and something that's attractive to them. Having a brand new facility is one way to attract them to, to the program. But in Liberia, the passion for football is unmeasured. 
of all the problems we have, this is the least of our problems, attracting young people to play this game. We just want to give them a nice, world-class facility so we can be able to extract their talent out of them. The Liberian Football Association is the technical arm of the national team. Uh, when I say the technical arm, we help to prepare the coaches, the players that are selected um, in the national team, they come from the league. So the better the competition, the local league, the better the players, and the better the opportunities for Liberian football. So Liberian Football Association needs to continue to focus on the type of player that we're producing at a youth level that's going to come into the first division. And some of the players will go off to our opportunities outside of Liberia. And we also monitor them and see what they're doing. But if the base, if the grassroots is not strong, if the quality of the player that we're producing at under 15, under 16, under 17 doesn't improve, we will find ourselves in the same cycle. And we're going to spend a lot of time and effort to make sure that our youth programs, our grassroots programs are strong. The type of people that are coming into there are quality and they understand the basic fundamentals of football. Amazing opportunities for business partners, for social partners, for Liberians. With success, people are attracted to success. Everybody wants to be on the winning train. To do that, you have to have a winning product, both on the field and off the field. We need to form synergies with our local business partners, local people that are doing business in the community, that understand the community. The issue is businesses who invest in football have to believe that they can have a return. They have to believe that their money can come back and they can get the credit for what they invest in. We intend to create a program that will make sure, in collaboration with the government of Liberia, that people who invest in, their, in football have some benefit in addition to just putting their money in football. From a social standpoint, football is the perfect opportunity to talk about education, to talk about healthcare, to raise awareness, and to continue to give back to the communities like we did doing Ebola. Doing Ebola, we organized an awareness program that helped to raise the awareness of the causes and the way to prevent yourself from getting Ebola. Football is this vehicle that can be used for so many different things in a positive way. And Liberian Football Association is the perfect place to be the distributor of this message and this image about football. It's very important. We have now become the Republic of Football. There is no better time for us to shine than now. But to do that, you need to be organized. You need to have a clear vision. You need to have a clear roadmap. I've presented to you my clear vision and my clear roadmap. Without the grassroots program, without the infrastructure, we won't arrive at our destination. So we're gonna make sure, again, that we're getting better coaches, improve the opportunities for them, better infrastructure, and focus a lot on our youth programs and our youth development, both for female and male. We also need to talk about our referees and the integrity of the game. It's very important that we protect the integrity of football. And we need to also attract referees, train them to make sure they understand the importance of the job that they have and protect them. Um, we have a culture where things are questioned. It's a culture of lack of trust. We need to make sure that every football game played in the Republic of Liberia, there is no question over the integrity of the officials that, that supervise the match. These are all very important for the brand that we want to produce. For me, football is my life. Football has given me everything, shown me everything, taught me everything. I have a debt to repay to football. It's the game, it's the one true thing in life that is fair. Football gives you what you deserve. What you put in is what you get out. I wanna be able to teach that to young footballers, to young people that work in football. There are no shortcuts in football. If you work hard, you will get what you deserve. And if you can take that and transfer that message to your life, you can be a successful person. I'm experienced. I've spent eight years as a football administrator. I've learned the business. I've seen the good and the bad of football. I played as a professional athlete. I went to university 
on a scholarship that football gave me, I've had amazing opportunities to football, but it's not about me anymore. My career is over. I want to be able to talk about another young man, another young woman who's doing amazing things in Liberian football. I think there's no better choice than me. I am the end result of when the system works and I want to make the system work for some other young men and women.